All right. What's up, people, man? I want to say happy birthday to this young South Central queen, Sharice Iverson, who died on May 7, 1997. Well, her birthday was two days ago. She was born October 20th, 1989. But her life was taken from her. Many people don't know her case. I always like to bring her story up and Latasha Harlan's story. But her, her life was taken at a uh, prim Las Vegas hotel called the Prima Donna, which is the prim. You know, it's across the street from Wild's Bills when you hit the state line with a roller coaster. Well, she was in the casino three in the morning with her father, takes her down there, got no no room. This guy, Leroy Iverson, in the hotel room, I mean, in the hotel casino trying to gamble, leaving his daughter out there on the floor when this punk motherfucker from Long Beach and his homeboy run into her. But listen to his confessing of what he did. Took off her. All right, so there you hear his statements, but this is surveillance that catches him as he lures her because her father's gambling. She can't be on the uh, casino floor. She's there with her older brother who's in the arcade. This is a time where arcades were a thing and um, they have no money. So she has nothing to do. Young child bored. She's running around. She runs into this old sick minded piece of shit um, who lures her into the bathroom to, uh, uh, by stating, let's go play hide and seek. Lures her in the bathroom, and that's when he begins that assault, sexually assaults her, molest her, and then kill her with his friend there. But listen to the friend who ain't charged. Peep what he states. How much am I supposed to, to sit down and cry about this? I mean, ha I mean, let's be reasonable here. Is my life supposed to halt for, like, for days, weeks, and months on end? The simple fact remains, I do not know this little girl. I do not know starving children in Panama. I do not know, you know people that die of disease in Egypt. All right, so there you hear this little piece of shit statement when, you know, everybody's like tripping, like, why ain't the Las Vegas prosecutors charging this piece of shit with murder, too? To, and this is family uh, uh, reacting at her funeral and nothing's being done uh, uh, to charge the other dude who, you know, they label as the bad Samaritan because he didn't do anything, didn't even report it. But I'm going to play this shit to where there's an interview with him and this piece of shit bitch, Barbara Walters. He tried to play this punk motherfucker, Jeremy Strohmeyer, as a victim. Peep this uh, 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 trash-ass bitch, Barbara Walters, in this interview. And then you'll hear the little punk dude uh, uh, who was there as well. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. In person, there is nothing threatening about him. We met a slender, polite, well-spoken young man at the Las Vegas County Detention Center where he was waiting to be transferred to a state prison. Jeremy, you know that there are people who think that you are a monster? Yes. People want to believe that I'm a monster because that's easy. They don't want to believe that I'm the same as their own son or their own brother. Man, you hear this disgusting bitch, Barbara Walters, trying to paint this little fucking soft-ass picture of this punk-ass dude? And like I say, the prosecutors need to charge that other motherfucker. They let move on with his life, man. The same way they doing with the Tupac and Keefe D shit, they need to do with his friend. But this punk bitch, Barbara Walters, is a sick-minded little whore. It gets worse. Pete, the rest of this shit. We start at the beginning, at 18 months old, when Jeremy was adopted by John and Winnie Strohmeyer. They already had a biological daughter, Heather, but they wanted to adopt a so-called hard-to-place child, one who might otherwise be unwanted. When the adoption agency offered them Jeremy, they were thrilled. He was very lively, very active, um, so loving. Did you know what was happening to you? I thought I could handle it. When he was home and high on speed, Jeremy says he would stay up all night fiddling on his computer. After his arrest, police confiscated many files containing pornography on that computer. Some of the pictures were of little girls. Jeremy says now that they were sent unsolicited by email, but he did look at them. Are you a pedophile? I think that's the question people want to know. No. I, uh, I have no interest in sexual activities with children. Jeremy, let's go to the night of the murder. David Cash's father asks you to come along with his son for a weekend in Nevada. You go to the Prima Donna Casino in Nevada. Had you been drinking that night? Four to six beers, some whiskey and coke. 
Were you on drugs that night? Yes, I was, I was coming down from uh, my speed. I uh, had run out uh, the day before, or that day, and so I was taking Dexedrine. Which had been prescribed for you. Right. Security cameras recorded Jeremy Strohmeyer and David Cash at two of the casinos in Prim, Nevada that night, wandering around and playing video games. At the Prima Donna, Jeremy is spotted playing with Cherise Iverson and following her into the bathroom. Were you thinking then at all of molesting this child? No. Why did you go into the bathroom? You just did. It's part of the game, just... Chasing her? Yeah. Okay, you go into the bathroom, uh, the ladies' room, you follow this child in. What happened? She was standing there. I thought she was getting ready to throw something at me. And she ended up swinging a sign at me, a wet floor sign. And it hit me. And I remember at that point, for no reason, just being enraged, just being filled with rage. And I grabbed her. I don't remember what happened after that. Jeremy Strohmeyer says he doesn't remember now, but four days after the murder, he gave police graphic details about everything that happened during the attack on Charisse, including the fact that he had sexually fondled her. Police recorded his confession on audio tape. Took off her, uh, her boots and her pants and her underwear. And, uh, keep her quiet. You don't remember molesting her? No. I got so scared. I just, I panicked. I'm suddenly standing there. I'm looking at this little girl. And she's dying. And she's in pain. And I'm the only one there. So, in my mind, it must have been me that did this. So all I could think was to get out of there, to just get away. So I tried to stop her pain and I got out of there as quick as I could and I just... You tried to stop her pain by twisting and breaking her neck. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. Seemed like she was suffering so much. You killed her to stop her suffering? Or because you were afraid that you'd be found out? I thought, I, I didn't know what I was thinking. Stromeyer's friend, David Cash, had also been in the bathroom that night. He says he tried to get Jeremy's attention to stop the attack. Could David Cash have stopped you, do you think, if he'd really wanted to? Oh, yeah. He, he, was, he outweighed me. He was bigger than me, stronger than me. But David Cash did not stop Strohmeyer. Instead, he walked out of the bathroom. When I came out and Dave Cash was there, he told me, you, you were molesting her. Not in those words, but... David Cash, Jeremy says, filled in the details for the confession he later gave to the police. Do you think that David Cash should be charged as an accessory to the murder? Yes. Nevada authorities disagreed, even though Cash helped conceal the crime by keeping it from police for days. Even if Cash saw Jeremy actually molesting Charisse, as Jeremy now says Cash did, he broke no laws. David Cash and Jeremy Strohmeyer spent the rest of the weekend gambling and hanging out in Las Vegas before going home to California. The Strohmeyer say when their son returned, they didn't notice any change in his behavior. But four days later, classmates identified Strohmeyer as the man on the videotape, and police swooped down for the arrest. The Strohmeyers were devastated. And there was more to the nightmare. After their son's arrest, the Strohmeyers finally learned what they feel they should have known from the beginning. What they say would have given them the edge they needed to save their son. 
adoption files obtained by Jeremy's lawyers clearly stated that Jeremy's birth mother was schizophrenic and they learned she had been committed 18 times before Jeremy was born. All right, now let's get into this little trash ass fucking friend of his that ain't been charged, who's been able to move on with his life. I think they say he became an engineer. I think he worked with Cal Edison. How ah, this punk motherfucker needs to be charged. Peep his motherfucking story. When I entered the bathroom, Jeremy Stromer and, and Sharice Iverson were throwing paper towels at each other. You know, they were just playing, you know, seemed to twist horsing around. And it came to a point where Jeremy grabbed her and took her into a stall, to one of the bathroom stalls. I went into the adjacent stall, looked over, and Jeremy was restraining her with his left hand over her stomach and his right hand over her mouth. And she was trying to scream. He was muffling her screams. Cash says he then heard Strohmeyer threaten Sharice Iverson, saying, shut up or I'll kill you. You know, I tapped him on the head, you know, because it was completely out of character. And he didn't really, res he didn't, you know, he didn't really respond to me. He gave me kind of a blank stare. So, you know, in my opinion, you know, it was like time for me to get out of there. Why? You know, well, when an 18-year-old male grabs a 7-year-old child, you know, that's not, that's not a position I want to be in. Based on what I saw, I mean, it wasn't something I wanted to stick around and you know, see what would materialize. Did you say to him, Jeremy, come on, stop, let's go? I was giving him a look as if, you know, you know, that he shouldn't be doing that. But you never said, stop, get out of here, this is wrong. Verbally, I did not say that. But my body language certainly suggested it. According to the surveillance cameras, David Cash walked out of the bathroom about two minutes after he entered. Strohmeyer was seen leaving some 22 minutes later. But Sharice Iverson never left. Her body was discovered in the bathroom. She had been sexually assaulted and strangled. What did he say to you when he came out? He, he immediately confessed. Confessed? Yes. What did he say? He looked at me and said, I, I killed her. Just like that? Just like that. After Strohmeyer confessed to Cash that he had killed Cherise Iverson, they went to other casinos where they played slot machines and rode roller coasters for several hours before heading back home to California. Did you think to turn him into the police? The thought crossed my mind, but, but I didn't act on it. Why? I know that his day of reckoning is coming. I didn't, I didn't want to be the one that, that turned him in. You felt that was more important than to report a murderer? Even though he had told me that he had committed murder, it was really hard for me to fathom Jeremy as a quote-unquote murderer. But he told you he was. I understand that, but he's, he's also my best friend. You know, we're taking AP English together. But after Cash and Strohmeyer returned home, friends who had seen the surveillance tapes played on the local news tipped off police. Strohmeyer was charged with murder and three weeks ago, to avoid the death penalty, he pled guilty. He is now serving life in prison without parole. But David Cash, who watched as Strohmeyer physically assaulted a little girl just minutes before she was murdered, has not been charged with any crimes. He's evil! He's evil! Yolanda Manuel is Sharice Iverson's mother. She is estranged from Sharice's father and was not at the casino with him the night of the murder. She has collected 20,000 signatures, urging prosecutors to charge Cash with a crime. He seen Jeremy Strohmeyer put his hands over her mouth and carried her in the bathroom. He seen it. Anytime you stand and you look at something happening to anybody, not only a child, any human being, a dog, a cat, or whatever, you've seen that happen. So you a murder within yourself. You still got the blood of my babies on your hand. You think he is an accessory to murder? Yes, he is. I think he should be charged with accessory to the murder of my child because he could have did something to stop it. He didn't do anything. Peggy Lean is the deputy district attorney in Nevada, whose office made the decision not to bring charges against Cash. How would you characterize the, the conduct of David Cash in this case? Morally reprehensible. And it, it's uh, unfathomable that someone could see uh, conduct of that nature and not take some form of action. Why then didn't your office charge him with any crime? Moral reprehensibility isn't a crime. 
Uh, you have to participate, to do something affirmatively to assist in the commission of a crime. Uh, watching and failing to report, regrettably, is not a crime.